Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. <laughs> Welcome back to video three in my Fat Quarter Hourglass Remix Quilt Along series. In today's video, we are gonna do all of the tedious parts of this quilt, or at least I think they are, but it's great. It's a super simple, easy quilt. I just think that these steps in particular are probably the ones that are gonna take you the longest. So hang in there, you'll get through it. Um, I have got step-by-step -step for you. We're going to pair up all of our half square triangles and so our hourglass blocks. And then we're gonna trim up the hourglass blocks into nice squares um, so that we can assemble the quilt top. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. So before we get into the quilt making of the episode, um, I have a really fun announcement for you guys. Keystone Sisters Quilting reached out to me on Instagram. They are a sister team with a long arm quilting business where you can mail your quilts to them and they will long arm quilt them and send them back to you. And they wanted to offer up a discounted price for anybody who is quilting along with me and making the hourglass remix quilt and wants to send it out for long arm quilting. So if you don't plan on quilting it yourself and are looking for a long armor, I highly recommend you check out Keystone Sisters Quilting. So if you're making your quilt a similar size to mine and following um, kind of the pattern I'm giving, it would be $145 for edge to edge quilting. And that would come with 80-20 batting. And if you wanted cotton batting, it'd be 150. So excellent deal on quilting. And there is a link below where you can um, go to their website and fill out um, an intake form if you're ready to have it quilted. If your quilt is a different size than mine, like substantially bigger or smaller, um, I would just recommend that you reach out to Keystone Sisters via their website so they can give you an appropriate quote. Um, so yeah, the prices I just listed were for the size of quilt I'm making. So I just want to thank them so much for um, providing that discount to all of you guys. So I'll put that all in the description box below. And then a couple videos from now when I do kind of my quilt backing and getting the quilt ready for quilting, um, I'll talk more about that quilt discount again, just to remind you guys. So thank you. Okay, so now let's make 80 hourglass blocks and trim them up. Okay, so now we have our 80 half square triangles and the next step is going to be to sew two of these together to create two hourglass blocks. Um, let me just grab two different ones and show you what I mean. You can create hourglass blocks by using the same kind of block, which would give you, um, you know, uh, an every other kind of look. But what I'm gonna do is combine different um, fabrics to give a scrappier, you know, kind of more random patchwork type look. So all of my hourglass blocks will have four different fabrics in them. And um, the way we do that is we sew two of these half square triangles together and cut them apart. And that will give us two different hourglass blocks. So our 80 half square triangles um, will equal 80 hourglass blocks at the end of this step. So what I need to do is basically pair up these 80 half square triangles and I've been trying to think about the best way to do that. Let me get all my little stacks separated here. Oh you'll see I made a cutting error on one of my um one of my magic eight half square triangles so I left this this little tails so I know this is a messed up one. I'm not entirely sure because it's almost a quarter inch that I messed up um, if this half square triangle will work and create the right size hourglass but I'm gonna try and if I need to I'll supplement I'll make another half square triangle with some leftover fabric I have like some of the leftover um, fat quarters that I didn't use so I just left this one on top so I know <laughs> when I try to sew with this one this one's a little bit short of the full size so here are my 10 piles of half square triangles and I've got 
eight of each and so now I need to pair them up and I want them to be as random as possible so like I wouldn't I'm gonna you know if I pair up these two once that's the only time I want to pair these up so I think what I'm gonna do is kind of go in a order um, to pair these up so I create the most different pairs I can I hope that makes sense so I'm grabbing I'm gonna start with this pile so I'm gonna pair it up um yeah okay so it's one and I'm gonna start a stack right here or here I'll start it right in front of me okay this is my stack of pairs Okay, yeah, I think that's gonna work. So I got that pile done. So now I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna go the same way. And so every one is just gonna get paired up with every other one, except for, well, anyways, it'll work out, I think. <laughs> half square triangles paired up in random pairings. Um, I think I might have a couple that are duplicates, but that's okay. I think I have a really good mix. And so this is what I'm gonna use to start sewing um, my hourglass blocks. In the previous step, when we were creating our magic eight half square triangles, um, our half square triangles should be around eight and a half by eight and a half inches, give or take. Uh, and at this step, you could trim up your half square triangle if you want. I have tried it a couple of different ways where I trim the half square triangle before making the hourglass and then after. I find you really only need to trim after creating the hourglass block. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna trim any of my half square triangles right now. So um, let me take you over to the ironing board and show you um, uh, how I'm gonna put together my hourglass blocks. Okay, so I have my stack of half square triangles that I've paired together as randomly as possible. And so the next step is gonna be to sew two of these together um, to create two hourglass blocks. Um, and before we do that, we need to do some pressing and some marking. And so I thought I would talk about pressing for a second. So um, there are two ways to press your quilt blocks. You can press to the side, or you can press open. Um, we actually open the seam. Um, so everybody is on one side or the other. You're either a press to the side or you're a press open. Um, I press everything open. I have always done it that way for the last 20 years since I've been a quilter. I just have always pressed my seams open. Uh, I know the arguments for why <laughs> people like to press um, to the side, but I just have to admit, I don't like to do it. I feel like my blocks are chunkier and not as accurate. Um, I don't know. It's just a personal preference thing. So if you love to press to the side and the thought of pressing open gives you hives, then please just press to the side <laughs> and ignore me during this step. But um, I really like to press all of my seams open. So um, I'm gonna press these two blocks and I'm just using um, my Taylor's clapper um, to press that seam nice and flat or to let it um, cool off and kind of stay nice and flat. This thing really works. I've only had it for about a year and a half or so, but um, I love it and I try to use it for basically all my um, quilt block pressing. Okay, so I have one pressed. And then let me do the second one. 
Um, when you're pressing triangles, uh, you do want to be careful not to pull on the seam too much because remember this is on a bias and when you pull fabric on the bias it stretches and so we don't want to create kind of like a wavy seam in the middle. So I lay mine open and then just kind of gently flatten that middle seam and I run my finger down to the bottom to kind of separate it. And then I get it started and I kind of just gently pull from the center just a tiny bit to make sure I'm pressing it nice and flat. And I just let the heat of my iron do the work. And then I lay my clapper down. Okay, so now we have our two half square triangles. Um, and we're going to create two hourglass blocks with these. And this is how I'm, I'm going to show you how I'm going to mark mine. Again, as we talked about in the last video, you can get a fabric marker and a ruler and mark corner to corner um, to create the line you need for sewing your blocks together. But I'm going to use my iron again to create the line I need to sew these blocks together. So my process for assembling my hourglass blocks is going to be sitting right here at my ironing board, which is right next to my sewing machine, and ironing two blocks flat, marking them, laying them on top of each other, sewing them, and then coming back to grab the next set. So just over and over again, I'm gonna press, mark, sew, press, mark, sew, and that's how I'm going to assembly line all of my hourglass blocks. But um, first, let me show you how I mark these. So basically what we do is you wanna line up your half square triangles right sides together, and you want um, your lights and darks kind of opposite. And so in this one, um, I'm going to make the reds go opposite of each other. If you sew the block together like this, you'll see I'll have two reds together and a white and a blue. So I'm gonna do it this way. So then I will end up with two hour glass blocks that look like this. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention while we're at this step is um, I have not trimmed up any of these half square triangles. You'll see the little dog, ear dog ears are still on all my corners. And I have tried this both ways where I've, I've you know, trimmed up my half square triangles um, and then created the hourglass blocks or sewed the hourglass blocks as is and then trim them later. And I prefer to trim them later. So um, your half square triangles may not be exactly perfect, but we're gonna use our center, you know, 45 degree angle lines as our guidelines. And then when we trim later, we'll be able to get everything nice and square. So that's why I have not trimmed up any of my blocks yet. But if, of course, if it bothers you, go ahead and trim your blocks. Um, I think you should be able to trim to eight and a half inches, um, all of these half square triangles, if you'd like to trim them up ahead of this step. So since we need to sew these two together and we wanna sew them together in this configuration, I need to mark a line from this corner to this corner on one of these blocks so that I have a guideline for sewing because we're going to do the same thing we did in the magic eight technique where we have a line from corner to corner and then we sew a quarter inch on either side of that seam. But instead of doing an X, we're just doing one this time and then cutting it apart. So I need a line right here. So what I'm going to do, set this one aside and I'm going to do the same thing I did on my large 18 inch squares and I'm going to line up this center seam right on top of itself and I'm going to use my iron to create a nice straight line. Okay and so that is my marked line for sewing and so then I just restack these and I'm gonna grab some pins. And so basically what I wanna do is make sure that the um, 45 degree line, the seam line, these are perfectly lined up. Because if these are perfectly lined up, it doesn't matter what's happening on the edges, we'll be able to trim it, we'll be able to trim the edges later. So I'm really just focused on making sure that everything is nice and lined up on my 45 degree angle. And so I'm just going to pin in a couple of spots. 
and then I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. All right, so now we're back at the sewing machine, and I've got my line that I'm going to sew a quarter inch on the either side of. Okay, so now we have um, our block sewn together, and I'll trim straight down this um, the center between the two cut lines. Sorry for the weird angle. I'm trying to move you around the room quickly. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to cut our two um, hourglass blocks apart. And voila! We now have two hourglass blocks all put together. Um, so, so cute. Okay, so let's take these back over to the ironing board and press. So we have our first two hourglass blocks. I'm gonna press these open the same way I was pressing open my half square triangles. And then just like that, we have our first two um, hourglass blocks. <laughs> How cute are those? So. Yeah, um, so I think what I'm gonna do is sew the rest of my pairs of half square triangles together, and I'm going to press them open, mark them, sew them, and I'm gonna create my full stack of hourglass blocks, and then I will take them all to the cutting board and trim them all up at once. So, time for me to get to sewing. <laughs> Okay, I've got two pairs down, only 38 more to go. <laughs> okay, so now I have all 80 of my hourglass blocks together, and the next step is going to be to square these up. Um, you can see I already kind of got started earlier, but um, got a few of them done, but I've got this big old stack now um, that I need to square up. So I'm gonna show you my process uh, for doing that. And I'm just gonna be using um, this Fiskars rotating cutting mat. I actually don't use it for the rotating capabilities. Uh, you totally can if you don't wanna pick up and put down um, your quilt block that you're squaring up, but I find it faster to just move the quilt block rather than rotate this mat. But I still like using this mat um, when I'm cutting small pieces over using my cutting board. It, I mean, I could just use this, but um, this is just personal preference. I like to work on the square cutting mat when I'm trimming, when I'm squaring things up. So, and then I'm gonna be using my 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch clear acrylic ruler. So basically what we wanna do is um, use the center point as our starting point for squaring up all of our edges. Um, so we know that if we've sewn our blocks correctly, we have a nice pretty X down the center of our block. And we're gonna use this coupled with um, a 45 degree line on our ruler to make sure that we are trimming the block squarely. And what that means is that when you're, when everything is cut, you know, each one of these seams should dead end into a corner. Um, so that's the goal is we want, you know, the point in the center and we want all of our edges to end, our seams to end in a corner. Sizes, I guess I should talk about sizes. So as you know, I did not trim up my half square triangle units before creating my hourglass blocks. Um, if you have already trimmed your half square triangles, your blocks may finish at a slightly different size than mine. So um, these instructions um, and sizes are for everyone who put their half square triangles together, did not trim, and then made the hourglass blocks, and then your measurements should match mine. So the block you can see finishes at about eight and three eighths, eight and a quarter-ish. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is trim all of my blocks down to eight inches square. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the four by four 
um, mark on my ruler and I'm going to center it dead center on the, that point um, in the center of my hourglass block. And then I'm going to look at this 45 degree line and I'm going to make sure it is dead on that center seam with my four by four dot right in the center. And so that means that I'm gonna be able to trim to eight by eight. And I wanna make sure that with this corner, it's right here on the seam, that when I cut over here, I'm gonna be cutting right out the seam. You know, I'm just trying to line up all of my markings um, to make sure I end up with a square quilt block. So once I feel like I've got this, where I want it, I'm gonna hold down. And if you're only comfortable cutting with, you know, your dominant hand away from you and not coming across, then you can do this side by side. I like to cut um, the right side and the bottom in one pass, and then I flip it and do the right side and the bottom. So I'll show you what that looks like, but you can do this one side at a time if that's the way you're comfortable cutting. It's just, um, this is just what I have done over the years. So I cut the right side and without moving anything, hopefully you can see that, but I cut, I cut across the bottom. And so scraps. Okay, so now these two sides are square and I need to cut off that side. So you could, if you have a rotating mat, rotate it. Um, honestly though, I just find moving the block faster because I know these two sides are perfectly square. So all I'm going to do now is find my eight by eight mark on my ruler and line it up at that squared off corner. And again, I'm going to double check that my 45 degree line is perfectly lined up with my four by four dot in the center. And so now we have a really nicely trimmed up eight by eight inch um, hourglass quilt block. And so this was an example of where my center seam, my all four points met perfectly in the center. And I'm gonna show you a block um, that I did where the points do not match perfectly. Um, I'll zoom you in and hopefully you can see that um, I'm about like, I don't know, a 16th to maybe almost an eighth of an inch off in the center of this block, but it's okay. Um, we'll fudge it a little bit and let me show you um, how I do that. Uh, basically what I do is you will see that where the points don't meet up, one of these seams um, is perfectly straight and the other has a little bit of a jog in it. So I lay the perfectly straight seam down where it'll be even with my 45 degree line on my ruler. And I'm gonna use that as my guideline. And then I'm gonna line up the center four by four dot right in between these two lines to kind of split the difference um, for squaring it up. So that's what I do to kind of adjust if I have a block where it's not perfectly lined up in the center. So I'll put the four by four dot right in between those two points and I'll line up my 45 degree line and I'll make sure that everything is in the right spot and I trim. And I find my eight by eight mark because I'm trimming these to eight inches square and I make sure my 45 is lined up perfectly. And then I trim these two. And then I have another perfectly trimmed up block. And you can see um, 
these two corners where our straight line is, is pretty perfect. These corners are a little bit off because I messed up in the center. But honestly, once we sew everything together, I don't think um, this is really going to be noticeable. So um, I try to be as precise as I can when I'm making, you know, the hourglass blocks. But, you know, you may have a couple like mine where they're not perfectly lined up. So I just kind of try to split the difference and make it as square as possible. This is one where I messed up my placement. Ideally, I would have had the two blues across from each other, but um, when I sewed this one together, I wasn't paying attention. And I decided instead of unpicking, I'm just gonna leave it. It's fine, this is a very random um, quilt. And so even though I would have preferred <laughs> those blues not be next to each other, it's only on two blocks, so I'm not bothering to unpick it, just going with it. So that is how I'm going to square up the rest of this stack. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and wrap up the end of the video. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Just like magic. Um, no, in reality, it took me about four or five days to sew all of the blocks up and get them all trimmed down to eight inches square. Um, but honestly, this is a really super fun fast quilt. And if I didn't have to work during the day, then I'd be done quicker. But you know, a job and all of that that pays for this hobby. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's the hourglass block. And so the next step in the next video is going to be me laying out um, the quilt blocks in a pleasing arrangement, <laughs> and then sewing the quilt top together. So um, I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna film that. I don't have a design wall in my sewing space. So it's probably gonna be my living room floor. <laughs> Need to tidy up a little bit, vacuum the floor. And then um, yeah, I'll get started on that next video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.